Hello and welcome to the Ramon Foster Show, brought to you as always by our friends at the Get Go Cafe and, and Market. And uh, Moan, I would ask how you're doing, but I know how everybody's in the doing in the football world over this past yeah. weekend with the tragic loss of Dwayne Haskins. No doubt. It was uh, shocking. Honestly, didn't really believe the story initially when it came out uh, because everything happens online so quick, so often and falsely reported that you don't know what to believe sometimes. And especially I think for me was the age more than anything, you know, and I think that's probably what really gripped everybody as hard as it did was the age of the individual, um, how it happened. And, you know, and the fact that it that it did happen um, and a world of um, social media where everything is so, you know, current and actual for him to have Instagram stories up with the guys that he was around and to actually have that come out. It was real. Um, it was a sense of reality almost, man, more than anything. I feel for his family. I feel for him. Um, I feel for his family, um, his his significant other I was around and everything. It was tough. It's um, as much crap as we give each other in the game and as much fans go back and forth with each other as as much hate and love is given throughout the sport. I think the family aspect of what the NFL is kind of was on the forefront and not just that um, the support from Washington um, and the support yeah. from Pittsburgh was both. It seemed like both, both very, <laughs> we're not measuring it, but it was it was an outpouring of equal just sympathy that was given toward empathy that was given toward also, you know? So it was tough. It, it hit me definitely. And I didn't play with Dwayne, didn't really have many run-ins with him. If I had any at all, it was in passing super fast. And I, I would beg to say that it, it affected me just the same as if I knew him on a day-to-day basis. And you tweeted out, that day, shortly after the actual tragedy, and it got a lot of traction with the people, um, you know, who follow the Steelers uh, most passionately about sharing their empathy and their wishes and everything else toward the Steelers players who were down there. Um, a lot of times, Ramon, I'm preaching your language here, but when you're in the locker room, you're referring to the people in there as as brothers, and mm-hmm. it's not in quotation marks. It's not italicized. It's just that guy is my brother. It is. And to see, you mentioned the, the Instagram videos, Najee Harris joking around with, with Dwayne the day before. Najee Harris is a child. It's a, you know? Yeah. Um, you saw Chase Claypool's yep. reaction, uh, emotional, raw as it gets. And these players, because, you know, you saw what it was like whenever Coach Drake, Daryl Drake, the wide receivers coach, yeah. passed away suddenly in, in, in Latrobe. Um, these players are going to need help. They're going to need guidance. They're going to need to open up, aren't they? Yeah, they are. And um, like you said, I, I go to Claypool's uh, post first just because it was that. It was raw. And initially, I'm like, oh, you know, he's yeah. really on social media like this. But I thought to myself, these kids, man, and that's what they are. Hell, I'm still a kid at 36 years old. We're all still growing up in a sense. You know what I'm saying? Through life experience. I got more than they do in that locker room. But I'm just like, why would he go? You know, why would, why would he put a moment like that on social media? And that ain't even the point of it all. He showed you how he felt and and not just that, but that's how they communicate. And the fact that it was put out there more or less for the world to see, look, I'm hurting. Like if you know him personally, you should reach out to him or just in a fan aspect of, you know, still a nation means a lot. And I think football in a sense does, too. And we see so much of each other, whether on TV or whether you see the social media, the way most folks know their families, know their kids, know if they're married or not. There's a lot of known entities that go into the game. And I felt like that's where he was as far as Chase being able to put that out there. I think for people that's consuming everything around Dwayne Haskins passing, passing, I I feel like that you felt like you knew him also because that's, I I think, you know, yeah, I think where, where, where Chase is concerned, if I can get a little personal um, here on you, um, you know, a year and a half ago, I, I lost my mom. And, mm-hmm. and my daughter was in North Carolina at the time. 
And I, not going to lie, I did something a little similar. Yeah. Uh, with because I know it's a language that she understood, and I wanted her to see my daughter, my reaction. Yeah. In the moment, because I knew she couldn't be here, and the reason that I wanted her to see that was exactly what Chase expressed. He said oh. that this was for Dwayne Haskins. This wasn't for him to get whatever some of the stuff and criticism no. he had clicks and whatever else here. This is because he wanted to show everyone how much Dwayne Haskins meant to him. Not to show it off, not to look yep. whatever, but so that they you can't supplant the raw moment. And and no. I I honestly I respect the hell out of Chase Claypool for for doing that. I just I, I I really do feel like because we saw even from the outside the impact that losing Coach Drake had on all of oh, you. Man. Okay. And and specifically the wide receivers. We yeah. saw, I mean, Juju Smith Schuster uh breaking down right there on the field, Deontay Johnson, uh, who, you know, he got drafted and everything else. Yeah. And it does take a family, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. And Definitely going to get more into this DK too, but um, it's it's that type of show today. And I think it again. I always tell what you, everybody around us, anybody I know, man, give people their flowers when you can. And I think a lot of times we as humans that consume football and sports in general view people as if they're invincible, as if they're not human. With the way we react to them, the way they get criticized on social media, the way we. DK, um, the way we cover, you know, at times, Mm -hmm. although we're not coming down on guys like that, we respond to how they play and what's expected of them. The personal stuff that goes on on social media on how they interact with people is a bit inhuman, you know, inhumane. That's that's, that's exactly the right word. Look, I'm not sitting here playing pious on this count. Right. I'll occasionally write that an athlete stinks or, 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 or or get into something about their character when I'm out of line. Uh, And without meaning not firmly knowing something. Right. And uh, this is one of those step back. Yeah. You know, kind of moments in that regard. And for, for me too, because I'm, I'm, I'm getting newer and newer into this, this world of covering sports and just being around what's expected. And I always said, I never want to be a hot take guy. I never want to be really a predictor. I never want to be a guy that bashes old players. And I'm trying to always check myself. And this moment right here in which Dwayne is, he's in, I don't even know what to call this situation because I never want to disrespect how I'm going to speak about him in my words, but just, his passing, I think, is an eyebrow race to everybody to really, one, check yourself and understand, again, life is very, very fragile. And two, the way we look at athletes sometimes as, as, a, as a meat market and, and what's expected on a, on a Sunday to Sunday basis, you know, sometimes we don't know if people have had a, a I'm talking about a terrible night, you know, as far as family and dealing with certain stuff that, that they got on the day to day on top of trying to perform a show for us. And that made me sit back and be like, all right, mom, we're going we gonna to take a better approach to how we go about sports and just dealing with people. Well, we're going to do that specifically regarding <laughs> Dwayne Haskins when we come back. Welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show. I, I want to share, Ramon, I think we, we both do, uh, uh, some more thoughts that we have uh, on the passing of Dwayne Haskins. Um, the one that I want to throw out there, uh, from myself here is that one of the things that we're inclined to do is to look at either the last bad thing we saw from somebody, mm-hmm. meaning when you're judging in athletics, as opposed to the bigger picture. And what I want to put forth here is that if you view Haskins and his career from you know, the, the early struggles in Washington and, you know, and, and being the third string guy in Pittsburgh and whatever else, um, you know, that, that's your choice. You can do that, including posthumously. Uh, but if you step back from it, mm-hmm. this is a young man who, as a literal child, mm-hmm. okay, Went to Ohio State. I'm sure you've seen the video this weekend. Wow, yeah. Okay. And he's a toddler and he's walking around saying, Look at this campus. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to college here. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it's 
goosebumpy stuff and it's you know real. What? And, and i'm gonna let you finish real quick but that i yeah. think was what blew me back more than anything yeah because his age in which he passed was the same face that i saw in that kid inside of that locker same, room this is, this and i the think same, that's what even really, the same he had the same gait about him the same walk you know, when he so he he made it yeah. okay this is not some kind of failure story no. he became the number one quarterback, one of the number one programs mm-hmm. in the in the nation at Ohio State. He was so good at Ohio State that Joe Burrow was forced yeah. to transfer to LSU. Yep. Okay. Then he was drafted in the first round, 15th overall mm-hmm. by Washington. Um there's no asterisks for that, Moan. No. Okay. You do all of that at 24 years old. You are a spectacular yep. success story compared to 99.99999% of civilization. That's what I wanted to throw out there. That's not a positive spin. That's not a happy. That's just stepping back and looking at the Man. whole thing. That as a, a, a perspective to you, you know what's failure in this in this world. We speak yeah. about these young highs, you know, or what have you actually accomplished? And DK, for you to say not only that, but also a serious Heisman contender, you know, yes, went yes. and played at what we're realizing right now, a very fractured organization with the Washington Commanders in general, and, and still has some buzz and made that team somewhat relevant despite all things surrounding, and is still going through stuff there. Um, but you speak about that, and that's that's one of the best parts of his career. You know what I'm saying? But then you look at what he did with the community as far as, you know, suits for kids, suits for young men, showing them how to dress. Um, And just the other part of it, the reaction from his teammates. You know, like I've mm-hmm. seen Chooks Accord for posts numerous times. I saw Zach Banner. I saw all the receivers. I saw everybody post about this guy, old and young, from a guy like Joe Hayden, who's my age who connected and bonded with this kid out of Ohio State from another team, former first rounder. And everything everybody could say, he lit, he lit up a room. He made everybody better around him, despite whatever you want to think about his play. We're talking about his people. Like the, the smile I saw Marcel, uh, the strength coach for Pittsburgh Steelers. You know, it's just say, like, he lit up the room anytime you came in. And you, you know that's one of the one things I've always said about myself. When I leave the locker room, don't let him talk bad about me. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Simply because my acceptance of those guys that see me on a day to day, brother to brother, family member to family member basis, I wanted to impress them. I wanted to leave a mark on them. And for the short time that Dwayne Haskins had been in Pittsburgh, he has left a mark on those guys where you just see the emotions of people come out. You see the kind words they have to say about him. And honestly, you see the pain, too. Like Coach Tomlin and what he said about him. And I know that was very special to Coach T to get him. Why? Because he's from his area of the country. Yes. He's from the DMV area. That matters to him. That yes. matters to him. And and, and he's probably going to take this one hard. For an unemotional type guy, as Coach Tomlin is, I know this. And let's just throw this out. A young black kid from his area died under his watch while doing things for that organization to help him out. That matters a little bit more, man. Not that it wouldn't have mattered with anybody else, but I'm sure Coach T probably knows of or for very familiar with Dwayne Haskins' family. So it's probably like a nephew, a son to him almost in a sense. Yeah, that's some of the reactions that we saw that weren't going to get the same attention that others. I'm glad you mentioned the strength coach. Mike Sullivan, the quarterback's coach, yeah. was deeply emotional, spent a lot of time working with Dwayne. Um, I'll I'll throw out a couple other names that people might not be thinking about, um, but one of them is Mason Rudolph. For anybody who doesn't know Man. this, Mason was really tight with Dwayne, yep. and for all of the words and flowers and everyone else, everything else that everyone was sharing, Dwayne or uh, Mason just put out one word, just said devastated. Like yep. he couldn't even I- elaborate. Uh, and another one, and. Hear this out is Mitch Trubisky. Even though he oh. just arrived, it was Mitch Trubisky who called and invited him to come down. And by the wow. way, Dwayne's showing an absolute, like, I mean, beyond team uh, class gesture in, in in going down there, a guy that he's going to be, you know, competing with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll come to your, 
you know, your informal, you know, seven on seven camp and whatever, and, and, and work out with you and, and be there to support my guys. Um, that's, you know, that's always an, an obscenely unfair Mm -hmm. correlation causation. But when you're, when you're faced with tragedy, you're not rational. And there's, but but even still, you know, we, we I, I I tweeted this out too because after I started seeing a reaction from the guys and you saw chases and you saw just all the guys like Najee like like you said how do you how do you deal with one of your teammates passing like I said we spoke, you you mentioned Coach Drake earlier and hell that was tough for us like like this is the the, the part where it gets very real I, I I never forget when Coach Drake passed and not only that like he passed in the dorms. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. where, where where was our haven? And to have that that thought of 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 death being there was always like a part of camp. It's like, okay, guys, like let's we gotta get ready to roll. You know, like we gotta we gotta go. We gotta find a way up out of this because daily I would see Drake, me and Pounce every morning getting up to go to the work go work out at the uh, at the um, weight room. Drake was passing us going back to yeah, Rooney this Hall. This is at St. Vincent College this is for at anybody. Vincent. Yeah. We're, he's passing us going back to Rooney Hall. We're going to the weight room after him. He's up at 5-ish in the morning working out, and every day he have a joke for us or something nice to say for us. And that path that we walked after he passed wasn't easy. And it was it, it, it's hard to get by. And to think of the thought of those guys are in the same building in which Dwayne dwelled while he was down there in, my, uh, down there in Florida. And somebody is going to have to go into his room and get his belongings or walk past that door that they're all in. So when I say, you know, send your condolences and empathy and, and just support of the guys that were surrounding him, he'd want that, I feel like, the same way Drake would have wanted us to continue camp and just not let that be in the back of our heads. But that's a tough pill to swallow because guys are around each other more than they are around their significant other kids, yeah. parents. So it's more than just a death. It's it's not just family. It's like you've been in a house with <laughs> I don't know. It's it's uh, it's it's um it's part it's of your, hard. It's part of your life, but it's also and this is the difference with all due respect to Coach Drake between that situation and this one is the thing that you said hits you the very first, which was his age. His age. Um, you're looking in a mirror if you're those players and you're seeing someone who was just there with you was so real as you are all of those things Uh, that too that too uh when we come back uh we have an appropriate hey moan question coming up welcome back to the ramon foster show and we've got a an appropriate uh respectful hey moan segment um uh question that comes in from Zach Ward, who asks, uh, he said, uh, guys, I always thought that he would get another shot in Pittsburgh. RIP to Dwayne Haskins. Our thoughts and prayers go out to his family. And, you know, do you share that? Do you feel like he was going to get another shot in the NFL, Moan? I think he was on his way, for sure. Um, Mm -hmm. To his credit, he has that first round tag on him. And you know how I've always said about first rounders, you should get a second opportunity. Hell, we're looking at a guy, Mr. Trubisky, that's right, who's, who's you know, lay, laying down the tracks in which Dwayne could have possibly have gotten in it. This is the other part, too. I, I, I Of course, you know, I'm very pro Josh Dobbs and, and his ability to be able to play. And uh, let's be real, Pittsburgh chose Dwayne over Josh in the sense of signing quarterbacks to the roster. So I think that twice points in that direction. Yeah, twice. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? So yeah. the, the talent is there. Uh, again, looking at what his first team was, and I'm not going to bash Washington football team, but it's been some up and down on and off the field things from just management when it comes to that football team. So how do you expect a young guy to be able to flourish in that environment? Given the right situation, the time to grow, the time to compete properly, I think he could have been given that shot, man. And, and, and if I'm not mistaken, um, Coach T has always been open about competition, and and I think uh, Canada and the rest of the crew pretty much said this is an open opportunity for anybody. Yeah, I think we look at the money and say, you know what, Mitch got is probably Mitch's job to lose. But I think it's fair to say, look, if somebody's having a bad day and he rolled out there, I don't think he was going to really bat an eye, except for the fact that you wanted to see him prove himself. So That's, yeah, I think that opportunity was there and a fair one for sure. 
Well, yeah, that that's the thing. Uh, I I go back to what what uh, what Dwayne was doing last summer at Heinz Field, mm-hmm. and the quality of the 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 ball that he was throwing wasn't matched by either of the other two quarterbacks that were on that field. Okay, yeah. uh, meaning Ben Roethlisberger and Mason Rudolph. Uh, ben went so far as to make public like poking fun at himself, yeah. uh, saying, "I you know, I wish." You know, I had the arm that you do, and and Ben actually put that in his emotional uh, message to the Haskins family after the passing too. Because again, yeah. it's something I think that that those people uh, they they want to hear. They need to hear that this is this was this was headed in the right direction, man. Uh, for him, um, you know, Ben uh, cracked one of the the best lines of camp when he said that that Dwayne throws throws the, if he threw the ball through a car wash it wouldn't get wet i do remember it do you remember that okay I do. <laughs> and, I and do. when you and when you saw that when you saw the the passes that he was making yeah. you saw the reads that he was making you saw the confidence with which he was operating uh moving out of the pocket but in a controlled manner here and yes i'm talking about football right now yeah because this is what his life was about and this idea that he had somehow you know, falling on his face or whatever. It's, it's, he, he, he was a month away from turning 25 and he'd already oh been in the NFL for three years. This was not over. This story wow. was not over for this extraordinary young man. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I, just to be blunt with it, we've seen guys with way less talent, less longer in this league than, you know, uh, we could have assumed that that Dwayne would have it. I think that's the part that kind of really hits us more than anything when it comes to, especially, uh, you know, an athlete passing this young is how much more was there to give? And I huh. think you look at him, you look at everybody's reaction to him, you knew he had a lot more. And the opportunity Pittsburgh was giving him that he was creating for himself um, kind of lets you know that it, for sure could have gotten back into this league and, it just it sucks, DK. It, yeah, it ain't there's... no other way around it. But yes, I, I do think that, like I said, we're looking at a guy that's pretty much walking in the shoes that Dwayne wants to, in a, in a sense of a second chance. And that's Mr. Trubisky, number two overall pick. You know, and to say that he wouldn't have had a, a, another opportunity, especially as mobile as the league has become. Yeah, all three of them actually. You know, the, that's the thing is when, and, and you you kind of started on this a second ago, but the. All three of them were going to go into a training camp where, yes, even though Mitch Trubisky had signed the big check, let's presume that yeah. both Mitch and Mason had struggled and Dwayne was just nothing more than what he was at camp last year. Right. Don't tell me that the Steelers completely wrote this individual off or whatever. It just doesn't, you know, it, it's, no. It, there's, there's no chance of that. It was it was a it was going to be a surprise yeah. if he beat them out because of a lot of circumstances, but it absolutely was was feasible, and that in and of itself is to his credit to how hard he worked and how how much he uh, uh, how much talent he has. Also, yeah, you know, I mean that's that you could see it. You don't, yeah. you know how sometimes Bone, with all due respect to you as an undrafted yeah. free agent. You look on the field and you can yep. just pick out the first rounders yep, because there's can. just something different physically and poise wise about them. And when you looked at Dwayne Haskins, you go, oh, yep, yep. first rounder pedigree. One one hundred percent. And there's there's nothing wrong in saying that, though, DK has different levels to it. And he, of course, come out high prospect. He achieved that. Go to Ohio State. High achievement for anybody looking to go to a Division One college. Come on, we're talking about less. Some people just want to go to a smaller D one. Respectfully, I say Rice. Like, yeah. but he went to one of the big five. We're talking about the you know the Power Five. No, he went to and one he of knew the big he'd five. have to battle out not not one Joe Burrow, but multiple yeah. Joe Burrows, and and did. in order to have that job, and did and did, and on, on top of that, man, um, that that aspect of it, beating out Joe Burrow, and not just that. He was one of the the main guys over there dapping Joe Burrow up when he got injured. Like, think yeah. about that. Remember? He happened to be on that field. He happened yeah. to be on that field. So it wasn't a, 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 a malice type of thing. It's just Dwayne was better at that point. Joe benefited from the transfer portal. And they both were very successful. Still, no matter what the careers look like, he achieved a lot, man, as far as sports in a short amount of time from a kid that, again, that same face that I'm seeing, 
It's a face that you see as an adult. And I think it gets lost in translation when the business get inside of the game a little bit to where we start to poke holes at stuff, you know? This sucks. You said it earlier. Um, the, everything about this sucks. We're not going to let it go. Uh, I, I want to, you know, <laughs> make that clear. Right. Not, to, not to speak for Moan here because we talked before the show. We're not going to let this go. We're not going to let his... Uh, talking about him go we're not going to let his memory go we are going to you know talk about football you know in 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 other episodes but this is going to be something that affects uh, a lot of people associated with this football team just people who love this football team for a long time to come and go ahead keep keep i, I would say keep that support going in those mm-hmm. i'm telling you those those young guys need it. i'm not asking you to be no babysitter or you know coddle anybody but um Again, those 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 guys were down there with him. Probably had just departed from him, expecting to wake up Saturday morning and go do something with him. And poof, they can't understand that. With as again, it's a different era that we're living in with the way people interact with one another, and the fact that they can't go see their guy um, when they're open enough to be with him. On a day-to-day basis, man, it's got to be a heartache for sure. 